Hello everyone, this is Maurizio, editor of Power Electronics News and eWeb. Uh, today, I have the pleasure to have uh, here in this interview, Fabio Violante, the CEO of uh, Arduino. Hi Fabio, how are you? Hi Maurizio, how are you? Good, so today I would like to talk with you about uh, Arduino, because Arduino is uh, uh, an open source electronics uh, platform based on uh, easy to use hardware and software. Before that, Please introduce yourself, please introduce uh, your company. Yes, my name is Fabio Violante. I am CEO of Arduino since uh, July 2017. And of course, it's a big pleasure, a big honor, but also a big responsibility to lead a company like ours that uh, among all the startups that claim to change the world is probably one of the few companies that really changed the world so far. So it's a big heritage for me and uh, you know, uh, since I started this uh, this this journey at Arduino, I try to uh, understand better uh, our audiences. And uh, one of the things that I that I made in the company that had a big impact is the the fact that we specialized the company in three business units: one dedicated to educational product, one dedicated to makers, and the last one dedicated to uh, some customers that we didn't know <laughs> were so important uh, for us that is the pro segment. So we have a business unit for professional users. Excellent. So uh, as uh, I mentioned, Arduino is uh, an open source electronic uh, electronics platform based on uh, uh, easy to use hardware and, and software. Uh, I must say that uh, I used Arduino for several projects in, uh, in IoT and uh, IoT industrial market. Over the years, Arduino has been uh, the brain of uh, a lot of projects. Uh, for, from everyday uh, objects to complex uh, scientific uh, instruments. Um, today, Arduino is a worldwide community of makers, students, not only uh, programmers, but also professionals, engineers. Uh, offer, Arduino offers many boards for, for every target. So one uh, of the latest uh, is uh, Portenta for industrial market. Uh, at its heart is uh, the ST microelectronics microcontroller, but among of, of them, so is there a board that you prefer? It's a tough question, Maurizio, because, you know, uh, thank you for the appreciation, of course, of our products over the course of the year. Uh, you mentioned Portenta is, of course, the latest product and, of course, has an important uh, role in my, my heart because I was sort of uh, pushing to deliver uh, this family of product because it's very important now to have enough CPU cycles <laughs> for uh, enabling IoT application to enable AI applications. And uh, that's a very important product. Uh, honestly, making a preference is, uh, is tough for me. I also love quite a bit the, the new Nano family uh, because we tried to compress as much as we could into very tiny uh, products. And now we have Cortex M4 uh, for the Nano BLE, for example. We have the Nano 33 IoT that also very interesting because it's multi-core. It's uh, Cortex M0, some D21 plus uh, the ESP32 within the uh, module that we use for for Wi-Fi. But also, you know, the traditional products like we call them internally the hero products like Uno and Mega, especially uh, because those are very very um, powerful and robust. Uh, uh, boards. They can survive any kind of conditions. So they are very interesting also for learning when you make mistakes, you know, when you make shorts, etc. They resist everything. So <laughs> you can leave them underwater and they work. So it's yeah. a very tough question. But I think Portenta plays an important role for me and I'm thinking quite a bit also because of the development that we're making on the software stack. Uh, by supporting also a real-time operating system uh, behind Arduino, so that's that's an important product for for me now. So a, a, a development board as a, uh, a hardware and software part, so both. Uh, what more does your community want? So shields for uh, every need, but also uh, ready-made uh, libraries because just to speed up to increase to to stay in touch with the time the famous time to market for each prototype absolutely yes so uh, when it comes to my my view on this is that the hardware is very important but the software stack especially the firmware and the surrounding libraries but also uh, the knowledge uh, and the content is extremely important because 
without you know uh, the the work that we have been doing and the community has been doing over the year uh, related to firmware uh, we would not have arduino and it would never be so easy to to develop as it is today so for me the software and firmware aspect is uh, is extremely extremely crucial and uh, when it comes to shields and accessories, of course, we have a range of shields and accessories, but there is also a lot done by third parties, our partners, other companies, makers. Uh, and uh, so for us, it's more important to try to contribute continuously on the software side and also on the development tools side. Uh, you know, uh, the Arduino ID is, is downloaded, uh, has been downloaded last year 39 million times. <laughs> So it's like a, a sort of consumer product and it's a very important uh, piece of the of the equation because it's one of the reasons why people uh, like Arduino because of the simplicity of, of, of this tool. And what we, we have done there is also to try to uh, to bring also to the cloud the development experience, make a simple development experience. And now with the IoT cloud, we are trying to make it simple also for people to develop IoT applications as well. So talking or chatting with uh, with your uh, users, customers, uh, community, which thing stuck in your mind most? Uh, so, I mean, uh, perhaps a particular requirement applied uh, over the years, uh, which uh, later proved uh, to be to be important. So, uh, I love to talk a lot with uh, with with, uh, with customers, with users, and uh, to listen a lot. And this is something that I'm sort of transferring to the entire company. As an attitude to listen more than uh, than talking uh, about uh, about what they need, what they're doing, what are the projects. So it's always very complicated to say one thing because we we are exposed to millions of projects. You mentioned the website, so on our website we have 40 million yep. people visiting every year. So <laughs> it's a tremendous source of information and uh, and questions coming from people. But having to select something um, that's stuck into my mind, first of all. Talking about the professional market, for example, one thing that uh, we discovered talking to customers is the importance of helping uh, companies and uh, designers to retrofit existing equipment. Uh, because, of course, if, if you have a plant for doing something, it's not easy to make a decision to modernize it uh, in one shot. So having the ability through Arduino to use Arduino as a Swiss knife they can be used to retrofit something, adding intelligence, adding IoT capabilities, adding AI, uh, or even uh, expand, expanding the, the life of a product. Of, it's, it's something that uh, that came in dialogues for, with, uh, with with customers. The other thing um, that, uh, that that I learned quite um, badly at the beginning, because it's, it was sort of slapping into my face, was the issues that people had with the with the ID that that now fortunately we are in a position in a much better position because we invested a lot of money in the ID 2.0 that is right now in beta. Uh, but uh, customers were asking, for example, the users were asking for uh, a better editing capabilities and more modern framework, uh, the ability to have a command line interface tool, and finally, very important, also adding a debugger capability that was was long awaited. So. For me, these, thing, these, these are two things that came from the community input that I took very seriously and translated into investments that, uh, of, of course, you cannot do overnight because when you do a product for millions of people, you have to think carefully. But um, I'm, ve I'm very pleased of uh, being able to provide also answers to, to people through the products that we develop in software, hardware, etc. Good, thanks. So Arduino is... Uh the ideal vision of uh, open source in terms of hardware and software, as you, you mentioned. Uh, we talked about uh, Portenta. In a bigger vision, how can open source help the industry? So I can think in general vision about smart grid, open source network, for, for example, but not only. So the future will be a part of IoT and uh, IoT open source in this case. What do you think? So I think when it comes to open source, one thing that I would like to highlight is, is that uh, uh, there is a lot of talking about open source, but not all, all the people understand very well what, what uh, uh, open source means. You know? uh, in many cases, it, it is sort of um, a, a synonymous with uh, free. So people just misinterpret the, this concept. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the reality is that open source to be successful needs to be a sort of a give and take 
kind of uh, approach where basically people also contribute back with innovation by fixing bugs, by pro providing uh, suggestions, by providing their own code, etc. And uh, on the software side, this thing worked quite uh, is, is working quite uh, quite well. While on the hardware design, sometimes it's more like the <laughs> the take part is is uh, is is more frequent than the the the, the, the give part also. Uh, and this is something that is a little bit of a shame. So. Of course, for us, open source is, is, is important, so we can foresee open source to be at the, you know, uh, it, it's a milestone for any kind of uh, future development for, uh, for, for for IoT. And uh, so this is what, uh, what we see for the future. So we think that uh, uh, given the complexity of the stuff that uh, are coming right now, uh, with AI, with IoT application, uh, the only way is to 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 free up people by providing open source tool that they can extend, expand, learn, improve. Also from the security point of view. So now uh, we are in a particular period, I guess, a particular historical period of the COVID nineteen. So have you had any particular problems in terms of supply chain or anything else? <laughs> yes, nice question, and I think that you you are an expert and you're working in this sector since several uh, several years. So this year has been uh, a crazy year. Uh, so everything has been orders of magnitude more complex than it was in the past, from PCB supply uh, to components lead time to shipping cost to R and D iteration. Because right now, for example, we are doing remote working. So doing remote working for software is much easier than doing remote working with hardware because you have equipment. Uh, uh, testing equipment, you have shipment, uh, all the customer clogged with with goods coming from everywhere. So it was a tough year, even though, uh, you know, we have a fantastic team. So fortunately, the customer didn't see uh, big issues, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but the burden was on the shoulders of our, our colleague in the supply chain, uh, the, the, the factories that work for us, for the assembly, etc. But uh, all in all, it was a very successful year also also uh, 2020 and uh, and we are making uh, you know all the effort possible to keep also 2021 a very successful year and provide continuous supply uh, to our customers everything is more complex anyway so uh, very long lead time especially recently with the shortage of components uh, caused also for us to increase the inventory and uh, and to try to to to, to continuously supply products so another topic that um, I would like to talk with you is uh, the relationship between uh, children and technology that I guess uh, is important for the future, but also now. So what is uh, Arduino's perspective on forcing a passion for uh, electronics from uh, an early age? So uh, as, as you know, Arduino uh, has always been a, a strong believer in uh, STEM and STEAM activities. So for us, the young generation are fundamental uh, for the future of our society. That's uh, that's a fact. Uh, what we believe is a society made not only of technology spectator, as I, I, I call them, people that just uh, buy their phones or they electron their electronic equipment and are not curious about uh, how it's made or uh, how, how to make one on, on your own. So we think that if we instill into kids this type of curiosity by providing them the tools, to improve, to extend, to make stuff, uh, uh, we, we we fail. So the important thing for us is to have uh, always a next generation that are uh, technology curious. Uh, for this reason, we have a business unit in uh, Sweden. Uh, one of our uh, business units is uh, Arduino Education that is completely, completely dedicated um, to support curricular activity and extracurricular activities for uh, for teachers and schools and we have a bunch of products that are dedicated to helping teachers uh, digital yeah. products that uh, that are companions to our physical products uh, with this idea of project based learning yeah just a look into the future what do you foresee the for our arduino futures so which is the field you mostly focus on and uh, challenges that you are facing? I think there are two areas where we are now uh, investing extensively and you see on a daily basis progresses and announcements. So one is the Arduino Pro uh, business unit that is uh, the division that we created to uh, support the pro activity because professional need a completely different type of uh, uh, attention from us 
in terms of uh, temperature range of components, uh, in terms of uh, longevity, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 all the, the aspect of uh, support, etc. And this is an important priority area. And the other area where we see still uh, an important opportunity is the simplification of, uh, of the cloud for IoT and AI application, where we are trying to create a paradigm uh, by working a lot on the user interaction aspect and the, on the interface design, etc., to make it simple for people uh, that have little experience uh, to cope with the security in the cloud, to cope with uh, uh, protocols, communication protocols, low power, because of course we talk a lot about you know microcontrollers, but microcontrollers were designed with this different set of application in mind at the very beginning. So making simple and robust the cloud is something that is important, and this comes also with uh, a solid stack on the on the board that we that we develop, and that's the reason why, for example. Uh, we put a lot of emphasis on uh, uh, the availability of uh, a real-time operating system. We're using Embed OS right now as the basis for uh, the device stack for connected products because we believe that if you have to do complex tasks, you really need some support from a solid uh, foundation layer. So we are uh, in conclusion, just the uh, uh, last one. We mentioned, you mentioned open source. Mm -hmm. Uh, can open source in some ways help the next energy network with the goal of the zero emission? Because uh, so the the problem of energy is a uh, very is, is a good topic now. Uh, I have uh, I have had the pleasure to read the the book of uh, Bill Gates too, and uh, I would like to ask you what is your perspective on energy and what should we do to reach this uh, this goal clean energy to save uh, this planet maybe absolutely i think that open source will play a very important role and we hope that also Arduino will play an important role because at the end of the day uh, we live in a world that is that is a, a, a limited number of resources so we have to become better citizen and uh, there are many ways in which uh, open source can uh, can support this from uh, from making products that have a, a longer lifespan that can be reinvented over time without generating as, as much waste as we are doing today to also do a better management of the energy itself uh, by providing simple way for people to uh, consume less energy to generate uh, energy uh, from renewable uh, sources and etc so it's and also through the connectivity, through the ability to connect those devices, also making more informed decision with uh, self-optimizing uh, networks and things like that, distributed AI and things like that. So all those things can be enabled by uh, by the open source uh, frameworks, both hardware and uh, and software. So I think our uh, our future needs to be connected with uh, a goal of zero emission and we are trying to do our best to do, to do this and improve uh, what we do also operational internally. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Fabio. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot for having you in this interview. My has been my pleasure to, to interview you. Thanks a lot and uh, stay tuned. Ciao, Fabio. Thank you very much, Maurizio. Thank you. Bye.